Okay, so then we'll talk a little bit about hydroponics. Now this is a technology that definitely can be used in a vertical farm. Um, hydroponics is simply taking grow, growing produce without soil using uh, nutrients. Now the system that you're seeing on the screen is specifically called the Omega Garden System. This is a more high-tech version. I mean, you can have hydroponics with a PVC, a couple holes in it, putting plants inside those holes, and have water with the nutrients, and all the roots are, are absorbing the, the nutrients. This is a much more high-tech system, and will cost more. But basically, this system will allow produce to grow much more rapidly, which is what you're paying for, and actually be very efficient. Um, so a couple of things on, on this system. This Omega Garden system takes up 150 square feet compared to 1,500 square feet of farmland. As it rotates, it creates oils in the plants. Um, if anyone wants more information on this, I can describe later. It's kind of lengthy. But uh, it has a light source in the middle. You can use LED lighting to become very efficient. It uses only 18 kilo, uh, kilowatts a day. The biggest thing is this system will use 99% less water than traditional farming. If you can see in the, it's a little dark, but if you can see in the middle image, it's, there's six drums on this system. It's only getting water on the bottom drum, then they all rotate. So it's using 99% less water than normal farming. So this slide here is now comparing this technology to the tra traditional farming. We still have the same amount of produce needed, 55 million pounds. Now, I know you can't all see this, so I'll try to tell you, tell you what you're looking at. With this Omega Garden system, you would only need 5.7 indoor acres to grow the same 55 million pounds as with traditional farming of 1,600 acres outside. Now, the uh, supermarket value, again, is $88 million. That won't change you're gonna spend $99 million on these systems. So $99 million investment, you can see after just a year, you're gonna start making some money back. But the two bigger factors, again, remember, zero highway trucking here for a vertical farm. And local deliveries excluded, you have zero miles traveled and zero gallons of fuel used. Therefore, zero emissions from the act of transporting it. So another uh, technology used is aquaponics. Um, taking fish culture, fish farming, and combining it with hydroponics, as just described. Um, this is a real simple system. You have big tanks of fish. You can have tilapia, or uh, George's favorite perch. And the fish, basically once the fish poop, that the nutrients in that are filtered into tr uh, trays uh, using tr more traditional hydroponic growing. Um, where those nutrients are going, the, the, the roots of the uh, plants are absorbing their nutrients in that water. In doing so, they're, they're growing more rapidly and they're filtering the water. And so the water gets filtered back to the, to the uh, fish tanks. So it's a continuous cycle um, to, to clean the water and feed the plants at the same time. Um, with this system, again, it has a light source. It's very efficient with LED lighting and it uses 80% less water than traditional farming. So this is the same slide here, comparing the two, again, of traditional farming versus aquaponics. Um, it's gonna use a little bit more area of uh, 69 indoor acres, acres versus the 1,600 of traditional. It'll cost less at $44.5 million to invest, but it has, still has the $88 million value. And again, zero miles traveled and zero gallons of fuel used. So now, before we go further, I want to talk just a, about a couple uh, sustainable technologies that can be used for a vertical farm. Now, these are both low-tech items as well as high-tech items. ETFE, if you can recognize these buildings you saw at the last Olympic, one of them, uh, it's basically a, a plastic substitute for glass and it's well insulated, it's lightweight, reduced energy costs, um, reflective slab edge and light shelves that can be used to integrate it into the architecture of a building to refract light further into the building. Parabock mirrors would do the same thing. You're trying to reflect light further into the building. Light tubes drawn vertically from above down inside of a building. LED lighting, of course, and it's perfect for photosynthesis. 
OLED is actually even better, and it's um, organic compounds spread over thin films of plastic. Of course, we know solar panels will work, wind and water turbines. Water turbines, if you're near a water source, can be used. Uh, of course, geothermal, and then cross ventilation, uh, earth tube intake, drawing air up the building from outside. Um, anaerobic digesters, you know, bio waste broken down by microorganisms without oxygen will produce energy, biogases, to sustain a building. As well as waste to energy, which is the same, basically the same concept, but using an incinerator versus uh, microorganisms. <clears throat> Gray water treatment. Uh, rain barrels. Composting. Composting creates, it's amazing, it creates its own heat. I was up in uh, Growing Power in Milwaukee, R Will Allen's place, uh, about this time of year. It was probably 20, 25 degrees outside, and I walk into a, a little greenhouse, and it's plastic clad. It's not a glass greenhouse. It's just plastic. I walk in, there's compost on all four corners of the greenhouse, and it was at least 20 degrees warmer inside this plastic clad greenhouse because of the compost piles. I'm generating a lot of heat. Uh, vermicompost is uh, earthworms uh, breaking down organic waste to create good fertilizer, and worm tea is a combination of that and water to create a, create a liquid fertilizer. Of course, jobs, services, and what it does it do? What does a vertical farming do for a community? All these are big factors, and it actually creates a lot of a lot of jobs and services. Of course, there's farm workers going to be involved. You're going to have nurseries planting seed, needing someone to, to sort it, package it sell it, indoor agricultural specialists, waste energy specialists, hydroponic, aquaponic, aeroponic technologies used, sustainable technologies for the building itself, uh, farmers markets, just similar to that farm on wheels I showed you, uh, facility managers, office managers, delivery distribution systems, uh, marketing services, of course attorneys legal services and insurances, security systems, cleaning maintenance crews, um, on-site farmers markers for a lot of these um, vertical farms will be in areas where there's food deserts and they can always have a continuous on-site farmers market within the vertical farm. You know you can have student internships at the uh, vertical farms, uh, education tours and seminars, neighborhood redevelopment and, and don't forget about us architects, engineers in the construction industry where there'll be a lot more jobs created. So finally, it comes down to a case study. Again, I mentioned I took six plants out of the 30 I researched, and I wanted to know if I took these six plants, what will it take to make a vertical farm, and how many vertical farms will it take to supply the city with just these six? So the six were uh, head lettuce, leaf lettuce, tomatoes. We excluded fish in this uh, scenario. Strawberries, broccoli, and spinach. Now all this is using the Omega Garden system as I previously described. If I take all those indoor acreages needed, I have 25.3 indoor acres versus the over 6,000 outdoor acres with vertical farming, or I'm sorry, with traditional farming. So 25.3 acres equates to over a million square feet. Now, what does that mean? Okay, a million square feet, is actually only about 40% of the Hancock Tower. It's, it's only 25% of the Sears Willis Tower. It's not a lot. But in a, in a more realistic building, I could take five warehouses, each at 250,000 square feet, again, slightly rounded up, and I'll know what I need to, how, how many buildings I'll need to supply these six items. So it's only gonna take five, and I'm gonna give you a financial scenario for one of them. And that one that I used in my study is this building. It's a warehouse down in Pilsen, Chinatown in Chicago. Um, and it is 250,000 square feet. It's perfect for this uh, study. So again, 250,000 square feet. It's really one building. It's going to be one-fifth of the total city supply of these six plants. This particular building I just showed you is actually for sale. It's $9 million on the market right now. If I put in $60 a foot to make improvements, that's $15 million. The biggest kicker is the Omega Garden systems are, are kind of expensive in the cells. They're about 60,000 each. 
That's $88 million for over 1,400 systems that would be needed to fill 250,000 square foot warehouse. So I have initial investment right now, and of course there's other, other factors, but a basic initial investment of $112 million. And I'm going to put $6 million on top of that for uh, yearly maintenance, uh, salaries, equipment, operating costs, and taxes. $60,000 is actually the actual taxes on this warehouse. So first year, we're now at 118, we'll just say $120 million for the first warehouse, first vertical farm of this scale. Um, and just like Jessica mentioned, there are a couple of vertical farms in Chicago that are starting out small, as they should, and they're, they're expanding and they're trying to build up to larger 250,000 square foot size vertical farms. And there are you know, plans in the works to do new construction, uh, high-rise type vertical farms, which is, is a, another vision of the idea. So we know we have a $120 million investment. Well, what are we going to get out of it? So let's go back to the, the six items I showed you. If I take the super, current supermarket value of these six items, and it was not rocket science, I went to Whole Foods and I wrote down the cost per pound of each one of these items, all 30 that I mentioned, and did the math. When you supply 55 million pounds of lettuce to, to, to the city, it's what it's consuming. That, again, it's $88 million. Same idea would happen to all these six items. So to know what the one vertical farm is going to do is I tally these up, I divide by five. Remember, I'm using, uh, I need five vertical farms to, to grow all this. So I'm going to do it for one. That's $97.7 million of actual supermarket value for these items, these six items. So you have, again, $120 million investment, and you're going to have a value in the end of $97 million I'm not, I'm not a financial planner, I don't, I don't know how to do all that stuff, but I think that's a good plan. So lastly, I, uh, I just one little visual eye candy is you can take these vertical farms and you can do a little bit more to them. You know, you can add on to them, and you, you'll make a, an addition to add more square footage, a little bit more uh, technology friendly additions to these buildings, and um, again, have more square footage to, to produce more yield, which is the uh, end result that you're trying to achieve in a vertical farm. So thank you.